What's going on guys? Right, I'm GJ in the house and we're back with the GPL week number 3 power rankings for the Jodo League and by we of course I mean myself and my co-host Transel. How are you doing man? Yeah, not too bad. Oh. Better to review some of these games. Hells to the yes. And of course if you haven't seen how power rankings work before, power rankings are primarily done on win-loss and differential. But, should there be any tiebreakers, uh, we will explain the factors which inform our decision as and when we get to them. And of course, our commentary will be our opinions, uh, so please don't be offended if we criticise you. Uh, but it is how it is. So, with that ball being said, coming in at rank number 10 this week is going to be Nico. Unfortunately, still chasing his first win. Uh, I felt like Nico just kind of got outplayed across the entire board by Berger. Uh, I didn't see an avenue for Nico to come back into the game, especially once the Scrafty went down to the play rough, the, the Lycanroc. I don't know if this was just um, Nico not realizing Lycanroc got play rough, um, or just generally just thinking that there's somehow a Scrafty outspeeds a Lycanroc. Uh, but that was definitely kind of a big turning point to me. I felt like Scrafty had a decent opportunity if it Dragon Danced, um, if it was the Dragon Dance set to get set up and be annoying. Uh, but we didn't really see it, unfortunately, come to fruition as it got O-code. Yeah, uh, I was a little confused why he didn't bring the, the Psychic Core. I thought they had a pretty reasonable matchup. Especially the Indeed, this. as it turned out, because of the priority moves that was killing or the Acceleroc especially. Yeah. Yeah, it just yeah, it never really got into the game at all. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate one. Obviously, of course, Nico's struggling with the fact that he had to make all his changes early. Uh, I feel like he probably wants to make one or two more <laughs> to really round out this team. But definitely an unfortunate one for Nico. Uh, getting 6 0 is never a nice feeling, uh, especially when you just got completely outplayed off the board. Uh, his prep definitely was a little bit interesting, as uh, so I'm hoping next time around that he has a bit of a better prep. Unfortunate that his next matchup is DJ. So, mm. uh, might be another time that he's still chasing his first win, but uh, definitely going to be very tough for him. But I'll be interested to see if he can adjust his prep and see if he can uh, find a way into the game to at least cause DJ some problems. Uh, but DJ's team is terrifying, so we'll have to see. Yep. Alright, rank number 9 then is going to be Professor Elm, of course. Taking a somewhat surprising loss to me, uh, to Denistio. I felt like when I watched the game back, it felt like Professor tried to do what he did against me. Uh, and unfortunately, this time around, he actually got punished for it. Notably, switching that Cabalion into a fire type. Definitely not the smartest play I've seen in a while. Obviously, he got away with it against me because I was kind enough to U-turn out. But this time around, uh, Denny wasted no time. Just went straight on in and nuked it. Made sure that Cabalion couldn't do anything. The biggest questionable decision to me was Gigantamaxing in Teleon turn 1. Um, this kind of felt like a bit of a waste given the fact that Milotic was still up. And Milotic is very, very known for being able to be specially bulky and just eat Inteleon hits all day long. Uh, there wasn't really an answer for it. And that kind of does call into question this G-Max Inteleon again. Um, we've seen it every single game now really do absolutely nothing. Uh, so that's going to be a big problem for Professor moving forward. Uh, we do want to see this Gigantamax get better. Uh, this week he is playing uh, Sylvie, in fact. So that's going to be a very mm. tough matchup as well, uh, especially as our Aura team. Inteleon doesn't have the best time against that. Uh, yeah, it just kind of seemed like he kind of threw away Mons and like the Ninetales was basically aiding the, the Cinderace to just click Pyro Ball. It was banded I believe so just annihilated his team. Yeah for sure definitely not the best prep in the world but he didn't have the best matchup either looking at it uh, as much no. as I felt like he could have won the matchup because Denny wasn't in good form. Uh, Denny definitely played his way back into form though. Uh, don't mind me as uh, I just need to screenshot something. Did it wrong anyway, but who cares? Alright. Uh, uh, so, with that being said, coming in at number 8 is going to be Winter. Uh, finally, Winter got her first one of the season. Probably not how she expected to get it, though. Uh, unfortunately, 
uh, winning by a DQ, which we will talk more about uh, once we get to Sylvie. But yeah, uh, in this particular instance, Winter had some interesting moments, but we are still seeing Shadowbone on that Alolan Whack instead of Poltergeist. I really want to see it because Poltergeist does so much more damage in this instance and would actually pick up the kills that she's currently missing. Uh, definitely something we need to see a lot more of. Uh, so hopefully someone takes Winter aside and actually uh, teaches her some of these new moves because uh, at the moment it looks like she's still using smoke on sets, uh, which can be relatively easy to figure mm. out. Yeah. I haven't watched this game. I was like half asleep. Um, I do remember the whole polytoad process and yeah, as you said, the shadow bone could have eliminated the um, yeah, stick and given it more turns of trick room and stuff like that. Yeah, if that Meowstick was gone, it was a very, very different game because the screens wouldn't be able to be set up and anything like that. It would have given Winter so much breaking potential. Unfortunately, it didn't happen um, as well as expected because Sylvie was actually playing extremely well. But then, of course, the unfortunate incident happened. Uh, so, <laughs> definitely changes things up. But, yeah. Uh, hopefully, we can start seeing some adjustments from Winter. Maybe get some new moves in there. Maybe some variety of movesets. And maybe someone who's a bit more experienced can sort of pick her up and help her build. Uh, Winter's actually playing Denistria this week. So, that can really be a very oh. interesting match. Uh, the two friends up against each other. Uh, obviously, it's a very big experience mismatch. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Alright. Uh, yeah. Go. Coming in at number 7 then is going to of course be Sylvie. Uh, Sylvie of course taking a DQ on the Dynamax rule. Uh, Sylvie was actually playing somewhat well throughout the entire match and then somehow I don't quite know how you managed to misclick pressing two buttons. I.e. Dynamax and then Max Darkness instead of knockoff. Uh, definitely a bit of a strange one. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I uh, haven't had a chance to get a response from Sylvie. Uh, I don't know what happened with that one, but it definitely seemed like he misclicked, which is kind of a bit bizarre to me. But uh, saying that though, before the disqualification, no, Sylvie's looked like a much different player to what we've known from him from previous seasons. Uh, it's kind of scary, not going to lie. Uh, I'm not looking forward to my match against him now. <laughs> yeah, it's just super unfortunate that, like even I'm looking at now, like, Knockoff would have been because it was a Pori 2, so it would have been Massive. decent from there, and then just kind of runs through with zero or after. Yeah, so this should have been a win for him, but I'm, I don't quite know how the misclick happened. I'd love to know how it happened, um, whatever. Uh, hopefully, we don't see that again because I hate seeing DQs myself. Uh, I generally don't mm. like seeing them, uh, especially as it ruins often a pretty good game. Uh, but yeah. Hopefully he dusts himself down, gets off into his next match. He plays Hayes Professor Elm this week, so this is a nice matchup for him to settle himself back down again. Hopefully he does some decent stuff again. If he plays as well as he has been playing, I won't be too, too surprised if he comes out with a win that game. Yep. Alright then. Coming in at rank number 6 is going to be Arvid, of course, who took a very narrow loss to me. Uh, I have to be honest, I was very impressed with Arvid, uh, because obviously I've known Arvid for a while, and I've generally known he's often been someone who struggles in a competitive format. Uh, his draft league successes have kind of been minimal, um, but this time around he actually prepped pretty well. Uh, I was kind of impressed with, with what he aimed for. I did like his little tech move with the Ice Punch on the Mel Metal, obviously it's relatively expected against my team. Uh, but normally these are the kind of things that he would miss. Uh, this time around he actually brought it. Obviously Rocky Helmet chipped it right down, which put it in good range for me. Um, but that's a different story. And then of course the Scarf on the Gudra, which is something that nobody really expected. Uh, no one called it at the time. Uh, and of course I didn't, which is how I lost my Neuvern in that instance. But unfortunately the Gudra kind of limited itself by being Scarfed. Um, especially as he was Draco Meteor. I felt like he should have probably brought Dragon Pulse if he was going to Scarf this thing. Uh, it would have meant that he didn't have the downside. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, he played this fairly well. The other questionable turning point for me was the move order that he used with his Charizard and G-Max. Um, he had an opportunity to just go for Airstream on my Mimikyu. Uh, instead, he went for Overgrowth, uh, predicting the Rotom on Birdstyle, which made sense. 
Uh, definitely it does make sense on the play, but I felt like Airstream was always better in that instance. Uh, that kind of allowed me back into the game uh, to sneak out a win. Yeah, I also liked the interesting whimsicott uh, switcheroo to try and make the Volcarona a, a little useless, but... The problem that with that set is Volcarona only needed Equivodance if certain Pokémon were still alive. Uh, and unfortunately, yeah. the Pokémon that Volcarona really needed to beat were already gone, notably the Melmetal. So, uh, mm. and obviously he didn't bring some of the other things. Obviously it did well against the Mew. Uh, it obviously guaranteed the speed tie, uh, which unfortunately he lost. Um, but yeah, it actually turns out he had a rock move on the Mew as well. Uh, I didn't actually even yeah. consider that at the time during the battle itself. But um, yeah, unfortunately banding the Volcarona only really just wasted a turn, <laughs> essentially. Uh, I get the idea. I like the technique behind it. I like the idea. Uh, unfortunately it didn't quite come off for him on this instance. But nonetheless, though, he's definitely improved a lot, and I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing uh, how he takes on Burger next, because that's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. Ooh. Um, glad for that one. All right. Coming in at rank number five, then, is actually going to be me. Despite winning my game, I, s I fall down the rankings yet again. Uh, I seem to have a bit of a habit of doing this. Uh, obviously, my roster in here is actually my roster for week four, because I... Um, Unfortunately, my old roster didn't update properly, so I'm just using my current one. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I kind of just inked out this win. I kind of struggled my way to win this one. I got well, somewhat outplayed in the mid game, but uh, fortunately, I took advantage of Arvid playing a little bit passive. Uh, Rotom Wash definitely caused a lot of problems, uh, which I kind of knew it would. Uh, Rotom had a really solid matchup this week. I uh, just had to play this uh, as correctly as I could. Obviously, these are the kind of games that sometimes the more experienced players generally do struggle out of win. Uh, I'm not kind of happy with my differential. I need to improve that. Uh, but I may have a bit of a hard time doing that this week because I'm playing Akami. But uh, who knows? Uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting one. The changes definitely are going to really adjust the way I play this team. So I'm looking forward to putting them to good use. Yeah, and who would have thought that the banded Volcarona was the last one on the on the field? <laughs> I know, all right, it's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> it, okay, it did a lot of work. Killing a Gudra with a Bug Buzz because it was offensive and not max HP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many kills did Volk get? It got a lot. It got, it got three like kills. Three or four. <laughs> it got yeah. three kills and it was Joyce banded. <laughs> hey, look, it gets Flare Blitz. You know? Just saying, mm. it, might come, <laughs> it might come in the future. Banded Flare Blitz with that base 60 attack. Why not? Uh, <laughs> uh, right then. So, moving swiftly on from me being stupid. Rank number four is going to be Danistio. Also, same differential as me, but he actually won his match in a much bigger fashion. So, he takes power rankings over me this week. Um, but, uh, it's kind of nice to see Dinny back. To be honest, uh, this is the Dinny that we've missed for quite a while. The Dinny actually playing in very, very good form. Uh, hopefully we see more of this because this is the Dinny I expect. I don't want to see, you know, Dinny getting tilted off the face of the earth and not being able to win a game uh, because Dinny's better than that. But yeah, definitely an interesting one. I'm kind of still I'm in an iron about his changes. Obviously, he loves our arc as a Pokemon and Sinchino seems to do uh, Sinchino things, which is kind of okay. I think it actually gets triple axle now, which is interesting. Yes. Uh, but Dragon he definitely was the MVP for this match, for sure. Mm. Yeah, it was AV. I scrimmed a lot with him and we really worked on this team. He really wanted to come back into this and yeah, the, the Cinderace was pretty insane for him as well. Um, pretty interesting that he didn't didn't go with the uh, the Gengar G Max for this week. Um, I can sort of understand why, though. Match um, up, yeah. Obviously, usually opting not for G Maxes is kind of a little bit odd in G Max format. I actually didn't bring my G Max this week either. Um, so it definitely shows a lot that you can build a team without the G Maxes um, and it still be strong in the matchup. Uh, definitely an interesting one. It does kind of show that Dinny's not afraid to bring different stuff. Didn't even bring Rillaboom this match either. And Rillaboom's kind of been his MVP before that. So, uh, definitely 
an interesting one. He definitely prepped this matchup way better than he's done the previous ones. And long may that continue, uh, because mm. this is the Denny Lurt we all expect to see. He's actually obviously playing Winter this week, so this should be another matchup where we do see Denny at his best. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get upset this time. Uh, now we've hyped him up. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Don't let us down, Denny. I think I actually backed you to win this week as well, so I might have just cursed you. But you know what? <laughs> Who knows? It'll be fun nonetheless to watch. Uh, imagine if he lost this one and he does the recap one. He'll be so excited to get to his match. Yes, very. <laughs> All right. So coming in at rank number three then, taking a drop down is going to be DJ, of course. Handed his first loss of the season in the Clash of the Titans with Akami. Uh, definitely a very interesting one. I felt like the Venusaur kind of, in a way, was his Achilles heel by trying to set up the growth uh, instead of just going for damage. Um, it felt like um, there was no realistic way that this game should have happened the way it did. Like, how does a Venusaur get stalled out by a Sloking, of all things? Like, it has a type matchup, just run a grass type move on it, it can't be that hard. Uh, but unfortunately it didn't, which meant that the Sloking could do whatever it wanted. Uh, and it just felt like the DJ didn't managed to find a way to break through uh, Akami's walls. You know, even the Clangorous Soul combo did a little bit, but not super much in comparison to what you might have thought a Clangorous Soul combo would do. Yeah, I, the combo was super weird because I just felt like the fairy move was very obvious there, and Kamo uh, is not going to do that much to a G-Max mon. You just kind of switch into wheezing there yeah grimmsnarl gets stomping tantrum but there's no way he's risking it against a setup combo um and the the ending to me was also strange he he had a akami had a like six percent um slow king and a colossal and he had earth power i feel like you just click it it's just kind of free win but it didn't he didn't have a grass move because i know he had sleep powder probably growth poison move and earth power yeah yeah so he actually opted for sleep powder again kind of the same problem that professor elm did didn't opt for a move that it needed and they kind of ended up costing him in the long run uh definitely mm. a, a scenario where we don't expect to see that again from dj but who knows it does show that he's kind of not infallible uh, despite how much trash talk he does and despite how much banter he does in the chat, like he is <laughs> not he's not impervious to getting caught out by things like this. Uh, so that yeah. definitely is good signs. I play him in week six, so hopefully he keeps doing that. That would be nice. Um, unfortunately he plays Nico and then Winter in the next couple of matches, so uh, these are probably matches that you'd expect him to win. Uh, but who knows, he might slip up again, although Crocodile is kind of dominant in the matchup he's got this week, so <laughs> Yeah, uh, and, and I definitely didn't, extremely well. didn't see Rotom Fan coming either in that game. Very strange, but... I didn't see Rotom Fan come into any game, yet somehow it turned <laughs> up. Uh, I think he just bought it just to spite me, to be honest. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, moving swiftly on. Rank number two this week after a back-to-back 6-0 -back is going to be Burger. Kind of shooting himself way up the leaderboard uh, with two pretty comfortable 6-0s. Uh, completely outplaying uh, Nico off the board, of course. It is fair to say, it, though, his 6-0s have come against the two lesser players in the league. Uh, they are the bottom two teams, so definitely mm. something that's worth noting. He's not going to be able to get away with a lot of these kind of plays against some of the stronger players that are still up to play. Uh, he's got some pretty tough matches left to play as well. Uh, I believe he still plays Akami. He does play me next week. So, yeah, plays so coming week nine. I've been seeing them banter about it. Yeah, so there's a lot of Quite things a bit. like that. You know, and Denistrio's on the rise, plays in week seven. Um, mm. it's, uh, uh, and then he has to play Sylvie in week six, which is someone who's a different player to before. So, like, looking at this, like, his matches are not as easy as you might think. Uh, so, mm. obviously, get your 6 0s while you can. It definitely helps. I think he played this match very well in general. Uh, obviously, the coverage moves on the Lycan Rock was kind of the difference maker. Uh, definitely helped a lot uh, for him there. Makes a huge amount of sense. Uh, so, I'll be interested to see what he can do. Now he has to face some of the more difficult opponents. Uh, some of the people that are not as clearly struggling. Uh, that will definitely kind of test where he's at. Obviously, we know Berger's a very strong player. He did make the semi-finals last season for a reason. He's a very, very strong player. Uh, definitely a very calculated, aggressive player. 
uh, which kind of feels a bit weird saying that when he's got a stall team, but uh, it is what <laughs> it is. <laughs> hey, it's it's not stall, it's balance, as he likes to say, but I somewhat agree with him, but that's just It's me. fucking stall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was really You're welcome, Burger. You get your wholesome meme this whole season. Uh, you're, you're now known <laughs> as a stall player. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. no. I was really happy to see uh, Scarf Persian as well. It definitely put in a lot of work for him. I've always loved Scarfing that. It's just so fast and annoying. Yeah, for sure. Don't bring that against me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right. That means then at rank number one, he's still undefeated after winning probably his hardest match to play all season. Akami, of course. Taking a very, very comfortable win over DJ in the long run. Uh, I felt like, obviously, he got unlucky losing a speed tie uh, with the Darn Brothers, but mm. I don't think that really mattered too much. Uh, the Slow King kind of proved the pivotal factor in a lot of respects, as well as the Grim Snarl. Definitely both very, very well played throughout the entire game. Uh, it definitely made uh, your head scratch a little bit at some of the, the decisions that DJ made, but I can't punish them exactly how you'd expect someone who's in very, very good form right now to play. Uh, it definitely does not surprise me to see him up here. Yeah, and I really liked the Haxorus set to kind of uh, just break through the Torkoal and the, or, or kill the Rotom, that's right. And then it, it basically almost killed the Venusaur, put it very, very low. Um, he was saying to me if he just played that a bit better, he could have actually 6 0 from that position, but he messed up not Swords Dancing on a play. Um, so, there's always obviously room to improve, um, it's a good thing to see in your game even if you win. Oh yeah, for sure, so, for sure, and it also yeah. makes you even more scary, because if you don't make those mistakes, then you'll win even harder. Uh, mm. But, as you're playing against me, Akami, this week, please kindly make as many mistakes as you would like. Thank you. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> of course, Akami and I tend to trash talk each other a lot. Uh, we obviously did a playthrough together on Twitch, so uh, definitely a lot of banter between the two of us from there. It was good fun. But yeah, I'm looking forward to my match with him this week. Hopefully I can hand him his first loss, so that makes the league a lot more interesting. Uh, we'll have to see. But either way, of course, those are going to be the pattern rankings for the Johto League, of course. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Rival, my teacher. That's Trancel. Mm -hmm. stay, Always around. Yep. Stay safe, stay awesome, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.